Hi, this is Simon Lobstall and welcome to this video in which I'm going to talk to you about the track points behaviour and an anomaly that is a little bit annoying. And I made an earlier version of this in which I asked the question if anybody knew of an answer to it. And one of my followers from Korea came up with a very clever solution, I think, that I'm going to share with you at the end once I've explained what the problem is. So let's take a look. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to come down and select the line tool and just draw a line like that. So what if we wanted to connect this to some other geometry? Well, let's just make a little circle and let's add the circle. And what we in theory want to be able to do is take that line and come to behaviors and shape and track points. And we ought to be able to use the circle as the source. But actually, that's not going to work at all. It doesn't like geometry. So what we have to do is instead we have to come over to the library and we have to look under content here. We have to look for crosshairs. So if we bring in one of these, it doesn't have to be a crosshair, but a crosshair is a good thing to use. So a crosshair is obviously a bitmap, an image rather than geometry. So now if we come back to our track points, come to the inspector and we drop in that crosshair, you can see all this changes. We've actually now got the option to attach it. What we're going to do is attach to source. And what we want to do is just attach the first point. So I'm going to disable track two and I'm going to reset track one. And you'll see now that if I move the crosshair, the end of the line follows along. That's pretty nice. So what about the other end of the line? So let's duplicate the crosshair. Now what we need to do is we need another track points because obviously we can't do it within the same one. So let's come back to behaviors and shape. And again, let's use the track points and let's use that second crosshair as the source. And let's attach to source again. So we were using track one there, which is the, the first point of the line. So let's use track two here. It's already found it. So let's just select that crosshair and drag it. Oh, this is all looking rather good, isn't it? So here's the other crosshair. We can drag each end of the line using those crosshairs. Where it gets funky is when we start to animate these. So I'm going to do something quite simple. I'm going to select that first crosshair, basic motion, motion path. And for simplicity, I'm just going to select a circle like that. So this is good. That's following along. Let's just set the number of loops to two. You can see that's following that end of the line very nicely. Let's do the same thing with the other one. So let's come to behaviors, basic motion and motion path. And oh, immediately something's very, very obviously wrong. Let's again just set it up the same way, circle, two loops. So what on earth is going on here? The fact of the matter is that as soon as you attach a second animation, the whole track points thing goes wrong. Despite the fact that if we pick up the individual crosshairs and move them around, and we obviously need to reset our, our points like that, make sure they're stuck using the reset. So as I say, pick up the individual points, move it around, all good. Pick up that other point, move it around, all good. As soon as we try to animate both points rather than just one of the points, we're in a world of pain. However, as I mentioned earlier, one of my followers from Korea suggested a really clever way that we can work around this. And he has agreed to let me show you it here. So let's take a look. So I've set up a new scene here to show how this is all working. I've added in these circles here just as guides so we can have a reference for where our orbits are meant to be happening. So just enable motion path two so we can see that with just one point like that connected, it's all working rather nicely. If I just turn on motion path one, however, you see that it's actually different. It doesn't behave in an analogous fashion. And if I turn them both on, we have the problem that we were, were talking about. So the very ingenious and elegant solution that our Korean friend came up with was this. So we take crosshair two and we come to the position and we add parameter behavior and link and we link to crosshair one. We set the apply mode to add to source and we set the scale to negative one. And to start off with, it doesn't look as though that's working. We're not actually tracking with that original circle, but we can actually make that work. So what we need to do is we need to reset 
the crosshair position to where it ought to be. So circle two has got an X position of 360 and a Y position of negative 100. So if we come back to our crosshair here, we set that X position to 360 and that Y position to negative 100. It's almost looking right, but actually what we need to do because of that strange way that the motion path gets offset, we need to subtract the radius of the circle from this x value. So the radius of the circle is 250. So if we subtract that from 360, so 360 minus 250 is 110, and then we get to this. And now, if we ignore the position of the crosshair, what we've actually got is the effect that we want of it tracking that other circle. So very, very clever. A little bit hard to get your head around, but it really, it does work. So that, that was the answer, and that's really what, what should be happening under the hood. So I thought that was really interesting, and I think we have to say a big thank you to our Korean friend for that. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.